again. Uh, I would like to speak to you about uh, how to draw a sword. And in order to do that properly, you need to understand a little bit about the anatomy of the sword, or particularly uh, Nihonto, Japanese style sword. So this is a saya, and this is called the koiguchi. This is the, the kurikata. Normally, the saya would be on the left side of the body, and the left hand would be between uh, the kurikata and the koiguchi. And this is where the suba butts up to it. This opening is tight enough that it holds the sword in place. This is a hibaki, this gold-colored feature here, this collar. The hibaki is uh, kind of wedge-shaped, and they're typically made out of copper or brass that can be uh, gold or silver-plated. And the function of the hibaki is to act as a seal with the koiguchi here, so that when you place it in, it doesn't allow the sword to fall back out. In this way, it helps to protect the blade inside. So that little wedge allows for the blade to be suspended inside the saya so that the blade isn't banging around against the sides or the top or bottom of the saya. So when you draw the sword, once the hibaki clears the koiguchi, the uh, mune slides along the bottom of the saya as you're holding it. This koiguchi uh, can be a little bit tight, and so breaking the, the koiguchi, called koiguchi kiri, is um, a trick that normally the uh, many other sword schools uh, teach to use your thumb to do that on either side. But in the Bujinkan, Hatsumi Sensei has shown us to use our pointer finger. So if we do that here, the suba hides the pointer finger as it breaks that seal. So this uh, is this breaking of the seal of the koiguchi is called koiguchi kiri and is typically done for right-handed draws. Now when we get to a left-handed draw, things change a bit. Thank you very much. Until next time.